Hello class, welcome to lesson 6.2. We're going to talk about kites and trapezoids today. So our questions are, how are diagonals and angles related in kites and trapezoids? Our goal is to be able to use triangle congruence to understand uh, these two quadrilaterals. So we're going to go straight to kites and the uh, first theorem of the chapter, uh, theorem 6.3. Uh, the, or the, rather the first theorem with the lesson for uh, kites here. And this is uh, the theorem that says that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. Now in a kite you have two non-congruent diagonals and this one is usually called the major diagonal and this is usually the longest, the, uh, longest diagonal. And then you have the minor diagonal which is the shorter diagonal. Okay, so the minor diagonal and the major diagonal intersect, um, and when they intersect, they actually intersect at a right angle, which means that they're perpendicular, which is the purpose of this theorem. But also keep in mind that um, this is also um, the, it's also the case that the minor diagonal is uh, split in half whenever these two diagonals cross. And you can think of this because if you uh, realize that, well, we have, this is a right triangle, we have, we know that the hypotenuses here are the same, and we know that this leg obviously has to be the same because those two triangles share that um, um, leg, that side, then by HL theorem, we know that these two triangles are congruent, and therefore these have to be congruent. Okay, so that follows from that property. Uh, and also, similarly, this, this is going to be a right triangle, and here, so you have two right triangles. And since we have the hypotenuses here are congruent, then that means that these two triangles are congruent by HL. And so you know that these two angles have to be the same. And so you know that this, this is an angle bisector. So there's a lot of things going on uh, with this particular uh, kite. There's a lot of properties that you can get from this. So let's look at the first example of a kite. We have for the quadrilateral PQRS, find angle one. So we know that when the diagonals cross that this is going to be a right angle and therefore angle one has to be 90 degrees. For angle two, uh, we know that this is 35 and this has to be 90 degrees because it's perpendicular for the diagonals and therefore remember that for a triangle, this triangle in here, here in particular, this triangle, the angles add up in to 180. So if this is 35, this is 90, we can find angle two. So the measure of angle two plus the 35 degrees plus the 90 degrees here has to add up to 180 for a triangle. And 35 and 90 is 125. Then we can subtract 125, of course, to get the remainder. And we have 55 degrees. So this here is 55. Now, if we want to get angle three, again, we're going to, we know that, well, we know that these two triangles are congruent, so we know that if this is 35, then this has to be 35. But you can also get it um, with knowing that this is, two, this is 55 and this is 55, and therefore these have to be 35. Okay, just a property of the kites here and of triangles. So find the RP. So RP is... So let's erase this for a second here, and we're focused on now on this diagonal. We're finding the minor diagonal, the length of the minor diagonal. Now we know that uh, in this case, we have to be given some numbers here. Uh, and in fact, in this problem, it's not written, but we know that this is five uh, that this uh, length, the length of this of QP, QR rather, is 5 and then the length here is uh, 4. So, um, so it's not written in this problem but that's what those side lengths are. Now if you know that these, this is 5 and this is 4 then you should be able to find RP no problem because we know that this is a right triangle. So for this right triangle and I'll go ahead and redraw that right triangle we know this is 5 and this is 4, we should be able to find this and we'll call it A because this is a Pythagorean theorem at work here for this right triangle. We have A squared plus B squared equals C squared and so you can solve for that side here using the Pythagorean theorem. So we got A squared plus 16 equals 25, then we'll subtract the 16 over, you're going to get 9, then you take the square root and the square root of 9 is 3. So this side is equal to 3. 
which means that this side has to equal to 3 because remember what we mentioned earlier that these two diagonals or this diagonal it's cut in half so we have a total of 6 for my for RP alright so let's look at another example of a kite so we have um, we're looking for angle 1 here so we know that these two diagonals cross at a 90 degree angle and we got this is 32 degrees so we should be able to find one here so the measure of angle 1 plus 32 plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 go ahead and add these two this is going to be 122 then we'll subtract 180 from 122 and so angle 1 is equal to 58 So we'll just write that this is 58 degrees right here. Okay, so uh, if we want to find angle 2, angle 2 is over here. Well, we know that if this is a right angle, then this is a right angle. And we know that these two triangles have to be congruent by HL theorem because we know that these two hypotenuses are congruent. And, the, um, and we know that the leg here is congruent because it's congruent to itself. They share that side, so obviously, you know, it's the same side for both of them. So these two triangles are congruent. So if that's 58, this is 58 over here. Okay, so you can also think of this as the um, isosceles triangle theorem because you have an isosceles triangle here. Um, and the isosceles triangle theorem states that if you have these two sides the same, right, you have an isosceles triangle, then these two angles have to be the same. So you can also think of it as that. And so this is also going to be 32 then in that case. So um, this is angle two is 32 degrees. All right, so let's look at a theorem for trapezoids. So this is what is called an isosceles trapezoid. Remember that a, an isosceles triangle has two of the sides congruent, and that's exactly what we talked about earlier with the isosceles triangle theorem. If these two um, sides were the same, then these two angles were the same. Very similar for a trapezoid. You have two of these sides the same. Well, then that means that these two angles have to be congruent. And in, and in addition, these two angles have to be congruent. And those are known as the base angles. Uh, and the reason why they're called base angles is because these, are, these parallel lines that you see here in a trapezoid are known as bases. And therefore, those angles next to them are base angles. Now, a trapezoid, remember, has, the has two sides, which we call the base, that are parallel. And the other two sides are not parallel and that's what makes it a trapezoid so this isosceles trapezoid has this special property that these base angles are congruent okay so another tra uh, property of a tr uh, an isosceles trapezoid is that if I were to draw these two diagonals together um, then they'll cross and they're congruent to each other so like the length here is the same as the length here okay and therefore we know we can kind of deduce from that that um, this is the same length as this and this is the same length as this and these two add up to the same length um, in total all right so let's look at a couple examples of isosceles trapezoids we have here isosceles trapezoid PQRS what are angles P Q and S so we know that for angle R, it's 135. And since it's isosceles, we know that this is going to be, um, or we know that those are going to be the same, or rather, and I think I want to go back to the previous diagram real quick. I mentioned that um, in this case, BAD and CDA were the same. Now, in, in general, it's true that So uh, in general, it's true that these are congruent for an isosceles trapezoid, but for, but for any trapezoid, so if I had some weird uh, trapezoid, maybe like this, um, for instance, that's a trapezoid because these are parallel. That's not gonna be the case if it's not isosceles, right? So if I were to do this angle, it's not gonna be the same as this angle, for instance. It only works with its, when it's isosceles. So uh, if you go back here, well then, if this is 135, then this is going to be 135 for an isosceles uh, trapezoid. And we know that 
um, angle P and angle Q are going to be the same, or angle P and angle S rather. And so let's call them X so that we can solve this. We know that the angles in a trapezoid add up to 360 because this is a quadrilateral after all. Remember that it's 4 minus 2 times 180. And that tells us um, the angles, the interior angles when you add them for a quadrilateral. So this is going to be 360. So we have x plus x plus 135 plus 135 equals 360. So we have 2x plus 270 equals 360. 2x, let's subtract 270 to both sides. You get 2x equals 90, and then therefore x is 45. So each of these angles is 45 degrees. Okay, and that makes sense because if it's an isosceles, if it's an isosceles uh, trapezoid, it's going to have to have these measures for if it if it's to be isosceles. Because the only way, I mean, you could have you know 50 and 50. Uh, as long as you have the same angles on both sides, then it should be fine. So this makes sense for this particular example. All right. So given ST is parallel to RU, line segment RU. So these are parallel. So therefore, it's a trapezoid. What is the measure of angle TUR? So we're looking for this angle here. So we know that this is 47 degrees. This is an, an exterior angle. And an exterior angle forms a linear pair with its interior side, right? So these should add up to 180. So if this is 47, well then, you know, we could do 180 minus 47. And that will be one, uh, 133. So this here is 133. But because it's isosceles and it's a trapezoid, then this also has to be 133. So the measure of angle TUR is 133. All right, let's, look, let's use our other property of trapezoids. So this here is another isosceles trapezoid. That's because these two uh, sides are congruent, and then you have your two parallel bases, sort of tilted off to the side. So it's usually not how you would visualize a trapezoid, but it's a trapezoid nonetheless. So it says, the given expressions represent the measures of the diagonals. What is the value of A? Well, we know from that theorem earlier that the diagonals have are the same distance, and that makes sense because this is a symmetric shape. So if it's a symmetric landscape, if you were to travel from P to N, it should be the same distance as from O to M. So we can set these two diagonals, the lengths of the diagonals, equal to each other. So we have A plus 13 equals 2A minus 1, and then solve. So we'll subtract A on both sides. 13 equals 1A minus 1, and so A has to be 14. Just add 1 to both sides. And that will ensure that this is a, an isosceles trapezoid because it will ensure that the diagonals have the same length. Now let's look at another theorem for the trapezoid. This works for any trapezoid regardless of whether it's isosceles or not. Now this theorem says if you have any trapezoid and you have what is called a mid-segment. So this is a mid-segment where the mid-segment is parallel to the base, right? So this is parallel to these bases and it's um, it's halfway, it cuts the trapezoid at halfway. When I mean halfway, I mean halfway uh, on this side and halfway on this side. Okay, that's what I mean by halfway. So at the midpoint of each of the sides, essentially. So if you have a mid-segment like this, then to calculate the mid-segment, you simply, let's call the mid-segment A, and let's call this B and C. You take the average, if I want to get the length of A, uh, then I simply take the average of B and C. Okay, so if I wanted to get A, the length of the mid-segment, I take the average, so I add the numbers, divide by 2. That's exactly what this formula says. You take AD plus BC and then divided by 2. That's where the divided by 2 comes into play. All right, so these, these represent the same thing. Okay, uh, very simple if you think about it. Just take the average and you get the length of the metal segment. So we have a trapezoid here, two parallel lines, and then you have the parallel mid-segment. So that means this number has to be the, the average of these two numbers. Right? So, so we know that 25 has to equal the average of 
you know, we'll call this B and C for instance, right? So we add B and C together, divide that by two. Now this says here that, um, let's just call this B. Now this here is XY and we know XY is 25. So let's plug in 25 into there. So we get four fifths times 25. Uh, so four times 25 is 100, 100 divided by five is 20. So the length of this is 20. Okay, so we're gonna take the average of 20 and some number, which I'll call B, divide that by two, and that will help us solve for that top base. So in this case, we'll multiply the two to get rid of it because it's dividing, so the opposite of division is multiplication. So we'll cancel that out, two times 25 is 50. 50 equals 20 plus B. So B has to be 30 here, 20 plus 30 is 50. Okay, so now we got the missing side. So we know KL is equal to 30. All right, guys, I hope you found this video useful. I hope you learned a few things. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.